Good morning and welcome to this fifth Sunday of Easter season worship and happy Mother's Day to everyone. Before, no matter whether we are mothers ourselves, we all have mothers. And so we give thanks to God for those people who are our mothers and those who have mothered us um, in our lives and in our faith. And this morning we are online again and in your home at what we're calling Breakfast Church. And this one's always for Gary Wilson. It's bagels this morning on the uh, altar breakfast table. Um, I'm grateful today for our musicians, our music director Hong Jung Choi and Keely Lanigan will be singing uh, the special music. Uh, Elizabeth Westsmith is our tech and sound person and uh, I'm Kim Smith, the lead pastor here at Mount Tam Church. We're grateful that we're all here and we gather in this day uh, continuing to shelter in place but whether we are in our homes ourselves or with others, we are not alone, for we have each other and we have the God who has gathered us together. So I invite you, if you're at your breakfast table or you have your cup of coffee or glass of juice, whatever is your beverage or your food today, and we encourage you to do this as a family unit around your uh, breakfast table, uh, to pray with me and then we'll have a time of lighting a candle. I hope you have a candle in your home that you can light or at your table, and then the blessing on the food. So I invite you to center yourself by taking a deep breath in and out, and then join me in this prayer and put your hand on your heart as you pray. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, Help us to take this time to center on you. For you have made us. You gave us life. And you continue to be with us every day, every moment, every step. Amen. For our focus in worship this season has been the heart of the matter. And the heart of the matter is God is always with us. And we take the light from the altar. And as I light the candle here, I invite you to light a candle in your home to remind us that Christ is the light of the world. And now we're going to sing a beautiful song, a traditional song with contemporary words. Morning has broken. If you want in your home, please stand to sing. to nourish not just only our bodies but our spirits and our souls. This is a trying time and it seems like for many of us we're into somewhat of a rhythm of sheltering in place. Then of course there is the anxiety or the of the unknown of when certain uh, rules will be loosened, when we can come back in the sanctuary, when we'll be able to shop in stores 
for many of us when our jobs will be restored. So it's good to gather at a table and to be intentional because we remember that the first Christians gathered in homes. The day by day they broke bread together with glad and generous hearts is what the book of Acts tells us. So we're going to have an invitation for you to say grace. I don't know about you, I grew up with, with grace, uh, to give thanks for the food that we have. Uh, the joke always is, is that it's in the Christian DNA to dine together. So even though, again, we are in our own homes, we are together. And I invite you to join me in this prayer. Loving and ever-present God, we gather in your name, invited by Jesus and bound together with your spirit, and through that spirit united with each other, as we worship together online and in our homes. Feed our bodies and spirits with your comforting presence. Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless our drink and pour out your love. Bless our homes and families in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I invite you to take your cup or even a piece of food and if you're with yourself you can clink with me and we can also clink or uh, celebrate with those around us and I will say grateful and I invite you to respond with grateful, grateful, amen. Now please, oh I'm going to take a drink. Enjoy your meal while I read a very short scripture reading this morning. From the Gospel of John, portion of the 14th chapter. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Also believe in me. Our worship for this Easter season has focused on the theme of the heart of the matter. The understanding that whether we're sheltering in place or whether we're going about life as it was, our faith, our trust in God, our love of Christ, the power of the Spirit is at the heart of the matter of who we are as God's people. Um, as I was uh, preparing this sermon, a memory came back to me of when I was the associate pastor at Wesley United Methodist Church in Fresno many years ago. Uh, the pastor's offices were kind of down a hallway away from the central office. So you never knew if people were coming in and out unless the office manager called you on the phone and said, there's someone here to see the pastor. That particular day, I was the pastor in the office and the office manager called me on the phone and said, I think I need to come back and tell you who's here to have a pastoral visit. And she came back and she said, I don't know if you really want to see this guy. I don't know who he is. He looks kind of scary. Um, you know, you're a woman alone in this office. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't visit or visit with him out in the library. I said, no, you can send him back, but I'll leave the door open. So this guy came in and he was huge. He was at least six foot five. He must have weighed 300 pounds. He was pure muscle. He was kind of scary looking. He looked a little beat up. His hands were all calloused. And um, I was a little concerned. I didn't know who he was. Um, it was my stereotype of a big, burly guy, and that, you know what happens when we operate out of stereotypes. We make mistakes, and I made the mistake of judging him as kind of a tough, brawny character. I had no idea what he wanted to speak with the pastor about. And as he walked into the door and he filled the door frame, I stood up from my desk, and before I could say a word, he said, Pastor, you don't know me, but I need you right now. I need to talk to you. I need to hear words of support and comfort. I need the comfort of God right now. So much for what I had been thinking. And the man and I sat down and had words of comfort and time together. I remembered that uh, encounter because this last week I had a conversation with several congregation members and uh, one person in particular whose mother had been in the hospital. She talked about, for a non-COVID-19 um, illness, she talked about how hard it was to be working, to have her children at home, her spouse at home, and not able to go and visit her mother. She said, this was the hardest part. 
not worrying about how her mom was going to be. She knew her mom would be able to be treated and eventually released from the hospital, but that I couldn't go visit my mom. In her time of need, I couldn't put my arms around my mother and support and comfort her. I couldn't hold her hand. And she said that with tears. That's how those first disciples felt, I think when they were dealing with the reality that Jesus was no longer physically with them. Their world had been turned upside down. Yes, they had the experiences of the resurrected Lord, but it was not the same. They were disconcerting. They were uncertain. They were afraid. They were grateful for the living Christ, and they could feel their lives moving. But I suspect what they really wanted was him right there with him. They wanted to be comforted. They wanted to be held. They wanted to be able to touch a hand, much like that woman whose mother was in the hospital or the man who appeared in my office door. So in the 14th chapter of John, we have this amazingly beautiful passage. It's a long passage, and I only read a portion of it for you. But it's a beautiful passage about how God comforts us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. Believe in me. Jesus is offering to his disciples words of comfort and grace and love and hope. On this Mother's Day, I would like to think that Jesus is showing a kind of love as a loving mother might offer. And in fact, I would call John 14 the mothering or the maternal heart of Jesus given for those disciples and us as his disciples as well. Here's some of these words, this loving maternal heart of Jesus. Don't let your hearts be troubled. For those who are uncertain of what happened to them, he says, in my Abba's house, that word is transcribed as father, it actually means daddy or papa an intimate, loving relationship. In my father, my daddy's, my mother's home are many rooms. I've prepared them for you, and I am waiting for you. And then he says, I am the way, and the truth, and the light. When our hearts are troubled, he is there to believe. The Greek word here means to rely on, or to cling, when it seems that we are lost and our hearts are twisted and tumbled, he is there to show us a way, a way to the place that is already there for us, a God who is already receiving us and ready to receive us. At times, our hearts get broken. They get troubled and they get twisted up and we get anxious and we get scared. That can happen at any time, but I think right now it's a particularly acute time for this. Even as we move into what seems like a new rhythm of living and sheltering in place, we live with the anxieties of the next announcement about what rules will be loosened up, or the number of infections, or what's going to be happening with governance, or in our own work, our neighborhood. It's easy to have our hearts get twisted about. And we are met by the eternal and maternal heart of Jesus who offers us an alternative to anxious, twisting hearts. Maybe it's time for us who follow Jesus, who love God, to lean on, to lean into that loving, maternal heart of Jesus. And I'd like to suggest a way, which is a spiritual practice, believe it or not, a spiritual practice to add to this time. In addition to learning to baking bread or going gardening, maybe a spiritual practice might help. That when you feel your heart troubled, when you feel yourself twisting about with anxiety and fear, to take a moment aside, to sit down, to take that deep breath in and out and to hear the words of Christ, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me.
It's in these passages that the Gospel of John says, I will send to you the Holy Spirit, the comforter, in some words, the advocate, to take the spiritual practice of breathing in that spirit and allowing us to penetrate and to, and to just be in our hearts and to take that moment to put aside the anxiety and to allow the maternal, ever-loving heart of Christ to enter into your heart. Last week, I heard from my colleague, uh, Betty Pageant, who sends wonderful emails to me that inspire me. She was describing what she had done this day, and this is what she wrote. She said, I'm just picked artichokes from our garden that are cooking with our lemons and garlic. This morning, as I was cleaning out some beds of summer vegetables, I pulled out wild flowers that had planted themselves and took a moment to deadhead some of the other flowers. She said, I remembered something I learned from having amazing elders who had shared their last days with me. She said, from people who were dying, I learned that we need to let go of the what ifs and the if onlys to make room for new life. Maybe this is also a time to leave behind our baggage that we lug along in our journeys. Spring is not just a season for new growth. It is a season for making room for it. Maybe you can bring yourself into that season in this time of sheltering in place. Make room for new life. It's a purposive attempt. It's a discipline. It's a spiritual discipline and practice to purposefully, intentionally, and intently invite the loving maternal heart of Christ to enter you, to make room for that Holy Spirit to come into you as God has rooms for us, and to allow our troubled, anxious hearts to rest deeply in the loving hands and arms of God, so that as we are led through dark shadows and green valleys, we will know that presence. So do not let your hearts be troubled. Let the comforting maternal heart of Jesus enter into you. Amen. Let us come into a time of prayer. We're going to do it a bit differently today. The last few Sundays, I've invited you to place your prayers on the Facebook comment section, and then I read them from the phone. And I invite you to go ahead and do that, and we will individually pray for those prayers you have lifted up. But today, I'd like to lead you in a guided prayer, a small meditation. So I invite you to, if you can, put your phones down. And uh, let us uh, focus on praying together. Let us pray. This is not an easy time. Some of us are home with loved ones and others of us live with ourselves. And all of us are cut off from people we love. It's difficult in this moment not to be near some of the people we love and we're probably worried about. So I invite you in your home to lift up the name of people you wish were right with you at your table today. As we name them, they are present with us in our hearts. Name those people before you. We also want to call to mind the people we cannot name, whose names we do not know, but those who need our prayers and God's comfort. Take a moment to pray for them.
Let us also pray for those who have lost loved ones. Those who are sick and recovering. For those who are caring for loved ones who are ill at home. For those who are caring for persons in medical care. For those who are separated from loved ones. For those who are feeling alone and isolated. For those who are helping and are very tired. For those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort. For those who are afraid. And let us pray for all people infected and inf infected by and with the COVID-19 virus. Let us pray for medical professionals and care providers and first responders. Let us pray for those who continue to work in public employment and in stores and who are um, enacting, interacting with people daily. And let us pray for our neighbors and our communities. And because it is Mother's Day, let us pray for mothers. Take in a breath. As the Spirit is our amen. We know that God sends out our prayers and the Spirit. And the breath of God is blowing from within us outward as a spirit of compassion and presence. Let us take a deep breath in and out. And then I invite you to join in the Lord's Prayer and pray it saying, Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'm going to invite you to pass the peace. You're even welcome to stand in your home if you wish. You can text it to people. You can put it in the comments section. If you're with others, you can say to them, the peace of Christ be with you and respond back and with you. Let us take a moment to pass the peace.
before our final hymn, something happened today that often happens in church when we're together in the sanctuary is I forgot something, which is our offertory. So while we sing our final hymn, leaning on the everlasting arms, before we sing, I'll remind us that our gifts continue to support the ministry and mission of the church. The church is alive and active. Even if the buildings are closed, the church is at work. So you can uh, donate old school through sending in a check or go online to the church website, mtumc.org, and donate that way. Or there are other alternatives that are offered through the Faith Matters and through Facebook. Thank you for that. Let us stand to sing. worship draws to a close, we're invited to remember our uh, theme scripture, which is from the book of Acts in the second chapter. And those early Christians met in their homes, they fellowshiped together, they ate bread, and they did that with glad and generous hearts. We also know that our hearts can be troubled and can be twisted up and anxious. And we are invited to take a break from our worry. How many of us would like a break from our worry and concern? All of us. And to lean on the comfort of God, that maternal heart of Jesus. Our DS Stacy Curran introduced me to that phrase, and I just love it. And so how can you let go of worry this week? What have you witnessed this week that you feel an ongoing steady love for? Or if you can't think of something from the week, what's a memory that helps you feel settled, that settles your heart? Something that I use is called a God box. This is one that is made. It says, life is fragile, handle with prayer. It's a little old Altoid box. It's got a little fancy top. And in there are paper and pen. I invite you to make a God box. You might make a family God box or your own. Put some paper and a pen in it, and then what you do is when you have a worry or concern, you write it down and throw it in the box and let God take care of you. It could be a simple container, this wooden tray, little jewelry box if you have very small pieces of paper. I have this fake book. It's really a container. You can make a God box. You can buy it, anything. I encourage you as an individual or as a family to create a God box. Put some paper in it with a pencil or pen. When you have those worries, write them down and give them over to God. Now, as we close this time together, let us remember, God is always with you. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right there, your right hand, filling your cup to overflowing, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know that all of our feelings are true and holy, including our joy and our hope and our love. Take heart. This is the heart of the matter. 
And now let us go forth in the love of God and may that love encircle you. These continue to be the times when God's justice love will confront and challenge you. Allow God's merciful love to comfort you. And let us carry that love at a socially distant, appropriate level to everyone we meet. In the name of the Creator and the Christ and the Holy Spirit, let us go forth in peace. Amen.